Hey everyone, Dr. Yu here. Um, today we are looking at another lesson focusing on non-fictional reading. Now I know I promised that I would do a, a reading lesson on fictional writing, fictional passage, but this is a hard topic and I know some of you are taking teas very soon, like the end of January. So we're gonna try to tackle this topic first and then um, I'll make a lesson on fictional reading. All right, so the topic today is how to differentiate between fact and opinion, biases and stereotypes. And here are the learning objectives. First one, you need to be able to recognize a factual writing as supported by evidence. So really, um, this is about supporting an argument or supporting a position um, using evidence, right? So for example, if the author wants to say, Alice is a nice person, then the author needs to support that statement with evidence, right? So that evidence could be, you know, Alice volunteers at the local food bank every weekend, right? So that's a piece of evidence that can um, suggest that Alice is a, a nice person, a kind person. All right, the next two are very similar. They're actually related. So this is about recognizing the author's point of view and the author's tone. So the tone is really kind of depends on the author's point of view, right, in, in my opinion. If you can identify the author's point of view on certain situation or you know certain person, then it, it's going to be very easy to recognize the author's tone. Right? For example, if the author is praising somebody, then the tone is going to be very different than if the author is criticizing that person. Right. So just real quick, what is the point of view? So point of view refers to the author's position on an issue, and it's really just the author's opinion or belief. Right. On certain things. And the tone refers to author's use of words and writing style to convey his or her attitude towards a topic. And like I said, these are really connected, right? The tone usually depends on the point of view. So how do you recognize the point of view and tone? First, identify the topic, right? What the author is discussing, what the author is talking about. And the second, determine the evidence presented. And that's going to help you determine the author's opinion. Right? For example, if the author says that Alice volunteers at the local food bank every weekend, you know that's the evidence. And that evidence suggests a very positive opinion of the author towards Alice, right? And the last two define stereotypes and the biases. Um, I have a slide on that in just a second. Compare and contrast effect and opinion. And you know, this is very uh, similar to the first learning objective. So basically, uh, you need to be able to recognize which information is a fact, right? Which information is an opinion. Okay, so stereotyped language is um, language that assumes a stereotype about a group of people. So for example, um, a lot of people have a stereotype against a blonde women. So here is a contrast. What is a stereotyped language and what is a um, ideal appropriate language? So the stereotyped language is going to be, although she was blonde, Mary was still intelligent, right? So this implies that blonde women are usually not intelligent and that's a stereotype. So the revised the appropriate writing is Mary was intelligent. The tone is the author's attitude toward uh, the, the subject, right? So um, the tone can kind of reflect the author's point of view. So again, I have two examples here and you can definitely um, tell that the tone is different between these two sentences. First one, Sam and Dave got in the fight and this really just kind of states that these two guys got in a fight, right? This does not imply who's, who's to blame. But the second one, Sam attacked Dave. Now the word of choice attack um, usually has that negative tone associated with it, right? So if you say Sam attacked Dave, that implies that Sam is to be blamed for the fight. Now, before the practice, here are some common questions that you may see on T's. 
for instance, which of the following is a fact that supports the author's argument? So this asks you, um, you know, what is the evidence, right, to support the author's position? Second, which of the following statements indicates a stereotype? So you need to be able to identify that stereotyped language in the passage. Which of the following describes the author's point of view regarding you know, a subject? And um, which of the following describes the tone of the passage? Okay, so this is a long passage. So I put it on a slide without any questions. So I will give you about a minute to read this paragraph and then I will show you the questions, okay? All right, now is the first question and the passage is on the top. So you have 50 seconds to answer the first question. All right, so the first question is about identifying a stereotype in the passage. Now, the original passage actually does not have any stereotype language or biases, so I have to kind of improvise. So I said in the question, if, you know, if, if we modify the original passage, which of the following statements may indicate a bias or a stereotype? So the correct answer is B. If you notice that um, the author mentions that countries like Belarus, Cuba, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka have managed to wipe out congenital syphilis, while the United States face, faces is the highest incidence in nearly three decades. So the author was trying to say that, you know, all these countries are not as wealthy as the United States, but somehow they do not have congenital syphilis in their populations. They're doing something right. But the US is having increasing you know, rates of congenital syphilis. So um, there is something that's not right, right? Um, but that's a contrast in the writing. It, the author does not imply um, any negative opinions against those countries. So. Um, in order to have a stereotype, we have to modify a little bit. So I changed the writing to Belarus, Cuba, Malaysia, and Sri Lanka are poor countries, and therefore they're expected to have higher rates of diseases, including congenital syphilis, because those countries probably don't have enough money to uh, have a good healthcare system. Okay. And all the other three choices, they are just statements. They don't imply any biases or stereotypes. Okay, question two.
Okay, this question asks you to identify a fact, a piece of evidence that suggests the author's argument that the number of congenital syphilis cases and deaths is a shocking reversal from that of 1999. So find that information in the passage is right here, right? And you can see right before this statement, there is some evidence presented. Right? Last year, more than 2,000 cases were reported, including 139 deaths. And this is a big increase compared to 1999, right? So what was the situation like in 1999 when the CDC declared that the United States was on the verge of eliminating syphilis for adults as well as babies. Right? So that's a big contrast, 2,000 cases, and this is almost the zero cases. So the correct answer is B. Right? There are some numbers presented to help you compare the 1999 and what the situation is like now. Now, uh, if you notice that I put a little piece of information here, the article was published in November 2021. So you can kind of infer that last year referred to 2020. Okay, so in 2020, there are over 2,000 cases. All right, question three. All right, which of the following statements can you infer from the passage? A, women in the US are less knowledgeable about the consequences of congenital syphilis than women from other countries. Now, the passage does not discuss whether this more shocking increase rates of um, congenital syphilis is due to women being less educated, being less knowledgeable about the consequences of congenital syphilis, right? So there's no discussion on that. So when the author kind of compares these countries with the United States, the author did not mention any specific factors, right? There are a lot of factors that may have contributed to the um, significant increase in congenital syphilis cases, but there's not, a factor that has been implied in this particular passage. Okay. All right, B, antibiotic treatment is effective against congenital conditions caused by all sexually transmitted diseases. So the part that's not accurate is the second part where it says um, all sexually transmitted diseases. Antibiotic treatment is effective against congenital syphilis, right? But we don't know whether it's effective against every, uh, every single sexually transmitted disease. Okay, I'm gonna jump to D. The US has not been very successful in combating congenital syphilis in the past three decades. And based on the information here, in 1999, the US almost wiped out the uh, syphilis, right, in both adults and babies. So U.S. has been successful um, previously, right, in around 1999, but somehow, you know, uh, things have changed, and now there are so many cases of congenital syphilis. So D is not correct, right? U.S. has been successful in 1999, but now things have slipped. Okay. So C is actually the correct answer. That's the correct answer. Um, there is a shocking reversal. So there are some contribu contributing factors, right, that only occurred in, in the U.S. that's causing that surge of congenital syphilis, right? Because when you compare the U.S. with other countries, other countries are fine, but in the U.S. things are very different. So there might be some factors unique to the U.S. 
that's causing the surge of congenital syphilis. Number four. All right, for question four, which of the following statements best describes the author's point of view regarding the syphilis issue discussed in the passage? Hopefully you have chosen the correct answer, which is D. You can see that the author really kind of went through um, a few pieces of evidence to support his point of view. Right? So first of all, this author states that congenital syphilis is 100% preventable. If it's not a preventable disease, then we, there's not much to do about that. But if a disease is 100% preventable, that means you know, there is a pretty good chance that we can wipe out this um, disease right from the population. And then the um, author is saying that this has been achieved in countries that are even not very wealthy, right? Very small countries, um, not very rich countries. So with all the evidence the author is trying to say for the United States, which is a big and rich country, why are we having more cases of congenital syphilis? So the author's point of view is that this is an easily preventable disease and it should not be this prevalent. It should not be this common in the US. Something is not right. All right, A, pregnant women should take antibiotics if uh, contraction of syphilis is confirmed as such treatment can prevent fetal health issues. So this is um, just a statement, right? It's, it's not a point of view. It's not the author's opinion. The author is just simply stating the fact. B, even though the U.S. has done well, it needs to ramp up its effort to reduce a syphilis infection. This is just not a correct statement, right? The author's point of view is that the U.S. is not doing well, and it needs to figure out why. C, women should take precautions when it comes to choose sex partners to minimize the chance of getting syphilis. There's no mentioning of that, right? That's not what the author is um, discussing here. That's not the message conveyed in this passage. So correct answer is D. Okay, so again, thank you guys for your support. Oh, if you think the lesson is helpful, subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment, especially if you have any questions and feel free to share the video. Here's the reference for the uh, passage and a good job everyone. I will see you next time.